except for the chimney and windows and walls, and one or two places just down the halls, and swill with rabbits and newts and snails, and fat little puppies that wag their tails, and a whale and a tiger and elephants too. Well, maybe not elephants. Hi. We're going to talk about another different kind of plant today, air plants. And before we get started on talking about the real air plants, I want you to take a look at this one here on the cocoa table, along with Heather and Eric and me, because you'll see this in the stores and you'll see lots of ads in magazines and newspapers for it. Have you ever seen any ads for this plant, Heather? No. How about you, Eric? No. And, I, and if I'm saying plant, that's quotation marks. You've been looking at it, haven't you? What does it look like? Look, when you looked like up close, what did you thread. think? Thread. It looks like it looked yeah, like it might thread. be made out of thread. What do you think, Heather? Well, it looks like it's made out of little piece of pieces of material that came out of a piece of, um, out of some material of the thread. Oh. Because well, it looks kind of wrinkly or something right. like that. But if you just sit back here and take a look at it from a distance. You could believe that it was really a plant, couldn't you? Because it's green yeah. and it's feathery, you know, reach around. But when you see these ads in the paper and magazines, uh, they say, send for your air plant, never needs any water, never needs any food, doesn't need any sunshine. Wouldn't that make you a little suspicious? Because <laughs> did you ever hear of a plant that didn't need water and, mm -hmm. and light and food? Well, the real story of this so-called air plant is that each of these little branches used to be a colony of animals in the jellyfish family living in the bottom of the English Channel, living underwater. Hmm. It's, they look like a plant with a lot of little branches, but e on each branch there are a lot of little knobs, which you can see if you look very, very hmm. closely, little knobs, and each one of those was like a little teeny jellyfish waving its tentacles around in the English Channel and catching little, other little animals to eat. But somebody got the bright idea of pulling them up, drying them out, dyeing them green, and sticking them in a pot and selling them for air plants. And it is nice if you don't have any light or any water or any uh, food, plant food, and you want something that looks feathery and green and doesn't need any taking care of, well then, this would be fine. But it shouldn't be called a plant if it's not, right? right? You have to watch out for that in advertising all the time. But I want to talk about real air plants. And another name for them is epiphytes. I know you like to learn new words, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> well, epiphytes means plants that grow on plants. And the, I was always interested in them, but a a little while ago, I went on a trip with a lot of other people to an uh, interesting place down off the coast of Ecuador, and we saw almost every bush there on this particular island was covered with lots of other plants growing on it. And I brought a picture of one of the one of my friends who was on the trip looking at one of these branches. And can you see how many things are growing on top of each other? on this one branch. You'd stop by a bush and look at a branch and you'd see lichens and mosses and ferns and peperomias and lots of other plants. Some of them you could recognize because they look just like the ones that we have in our house plant, in the in house plant shops. But this man is a botanist and he looks very happy because a botanist is always very happy when he can see a lot of plants. So the reason that these, these plants grow on top of each other is that they can get their food from, they make their own food from sunshine and water and air. And it rains a lot and they get the water that way. So remember that word, epiphyte. Plants that grow on plants. And be suspicious when you hear about <laughs> air plants that aren't really plants. And let's go over to the discovery table and see some real air plants. Now, 
Now, this is sort of complicated because some of the one group of air plants is belongs to the pineapple family. Everybody knows what a pineapple looks like. Does this look like part of a pineapple? Yes. Have you ever tried taking off the top of a pineapple and planting it? Did it work? I think so. <laughs> well, my friend Carol lent me this one. She said when she was down in Florida a few years ago, she and her husband bought a huge pineapple and it had a big top sticking out of it and it had four or five little babies around the edge and the man said you take one of the little babies and plant it and you'll get a nice pineapple plant and here it is isn't that pretty it's so graceful and pineapples are in the bromeliad family you want to try that that's another new word bromeliad bromeliad, bromeliad. and i didn't know till i looked it up a little while ago how that family got its name but it was named after a Swedish botanist who lived in 1630, from 1639 to 1705. That was a pretty long time ago, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> a really long time ago. And he died in 1705, but people still remember him because this group of plants was named after him, the bromeliads. His name was Eric Olaf. Olaf. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Getting him mixed up with you. Maybe you'll be a botanist someday, <laughs> Eric. Olaf Bromel. He lived in Sweden. He liked plants. And this group of plants was named after him, bromeliads. So my friend Carol will probably never get any pineapples on her plant around here. But maybe if she went to Hawaii and, and took the plant with her and planted it out in the pineapple field, it would get a pineapple. Mm -hmm. Eventually, they have to be pretty big. Some of the bromeliads grow in dirt, like the pineapple plant. But lots of them grow up on the tops of trees, on top of other plants. That's why it's an important family remember. Now this is going to be hard for you to believe. See this stuff yeah. on Aurora's perch? Do you recognize that? And I have another clump of it here. Yeah, I'll give it a look. That's a nest. <laughs> well, some birds do use it for nests. Is it hay? No. Hay comes from, you know what hay comes from? Grass. Grass, right. This is curly, isn't it? Looks like these jumps right up. Down it's in, a plant? Uh, it's a plant, right. It's an air plant that doesn't need any dirt to grow. Mm -hmm. I, you've never made a trip down to Florida or Louisiana or Mississippi mm -hmm. and seen lots of gray stuff hanging on the trees? Well, that this stuff is called Spanish moss. And here's another uh, name that you have to be a little bit wary of because it's not really moss. It's in the pineapple family. It's in the same family with this plant. <laughs> Isn't that hard to believe? And it really grows on air. It hangs on telephone wires and on people's clotheslines and all over the big trees and it just waves around the breeze and gets water from the rain and sunshine and air and gets enough from the sunshine and air to make its own food. And it does have a flower on it eventually. I've never seen the flower. But Spanish moss, people down there use it to uh, stuff, used to use it to stuff mattresses with. And a little bird called the Perilla warbler makes its nests in big bunches of it hanging down. So it's like part of it. Yeah, that might be the flower, a little dried up flower. I've had this for a long time. I haven't been down south recently, so I brought this back last time. It's a little bit dried out, but I wanted you to get the idea of the Spanish moss being in the same family with a pineapple. Hard to believe. Now, one of the ways that plants that live on other plants can last when the weather is dry for a long time is that they can curl up. If they don't have any place to keep water, some of them keep water down in the middle mm -hmm. like that. And I'll show you one that has a lot of water down in its middle in a minute. They can curl up. And here's a plant. Can you see how it's all curled up? Because mm -hmm. it's all dried out. This plant came from Mexico. And it's called a resurrection plant. And not too far from here, over in West Virginia, we have a fern called the resurrection fern that does the same thing. It grows on trees. When it doesn't rain, it just curls all up, scrunches all up. As soon as it rains, it unfolds. And I didn't have any of that. So I thought I'd show you what happens with this resurrection plant. We'll put it in this jar of water and look at it in a few minutes and see if it's resurrected. Do you know what resurrect means? 
to come alive again, to look like it's dead. It really does <laughs> look like it's dead, doesn't it? Yeah. And resurrect means to come alive again. So, uh, Heather, you want to take it and drop it in the jar? Then we'll just keep an eye on it. And s we might not be able to get it out again <laughs> if it gets too big. Maybe we better poke it down. Let me sink. Is it? Yeah. Well, we'll give it a push and get it all the way down so it can soak up as much water as possible. Looks like it's turning red. Yeah, maybe. Well, it's a sort of a. It's going to float for a while. We'll just put that in that. Now, I wanted to show you one other plan. I, I wonder if you know this. Give you each piece. You might recognize that because. Most everybody has a little bit of this in their house at a certain time of the year. Looks like corn. <laughs> well, those are little white berries, and it does ha it has leaves. I c here's a best specimen with little white berries and leaves. Now, this plant is a parasite. Do you know what that means? No. <laughs> a parasite is something that grows on something else and damages it. It's not good for you or a plant or any uh, other living thing to have a parasite on it because a parasite bothers the plant or the other animal it's living on and this lives on a tree and sucks juice out of the tree so it's not too good for the tree to have a whole lot of these plants on it this is mistletoe don't you know mistletoe yes do you know what mistletoe is supposed to be good for for a kissing ball right <laughs> there's a superstition or in people's houses they hang it up inside the door and, and if you see if a boy sees a girl standing under the mistletoe then you can give her a kiss <laughs> that's a good thing to remember eric <laughs> mistletoe is a parasite because it gets its food from the plant that lives on but the air plants that we're talking about don't bother the plant that they're living on you get that difference yeah they just they make their own food okay Let me show you this plant in the pineapple family, another bromeliad that I borrowed from my friend at the nursery. He has a nice nursery, and uh, he let me borrow this. And if you peep over, the, or maybe if I tip it, you can see the water inside. Mm -hmm. He says they're really nice plants for people to have. Uh, probably, well, if we spill the water out, we'll put some more in before I take it back to him has a well in the middle. So when it rains, this little well fills up, and that keeps the plant happy uh, for the times that it doesn't rain. And that spike just coming up out of the middle is going to be a beautiful orange spike of flowers. He said in a couple more weeks they really would be beautiful. He just got these from Florida. And this is the kind of plant that if you go down to Florida or down to South America or Central America and you look up in the tops of the tall trees, you'll see things like this growing in the tops of the trees. Everything growing on top of each other. Looks like it was painted on the bottom Doesn't of the leaves. Doesn't it though? Right, like a, was trying, someone was trying to make it into a zebra or something. Mm -hmm. So there's a beautiful bromeliad. Now let me show you this sad looking specimen first. You know, I, sometimes I have a hard time with my plants. I love them all, and I, but I treat them all sort of alike, and sometimes you have to treat. This one looked pretty, pretty nice until a few weeks ago when I read some directions in a book that if you wanted to get your bromeliad to bloom, the thing to do was to put an apple with it. Doesn't that sound strange? Put an apple with it, and cover it up with a plastic bag and leave it for six weeks and then take the bag off and pretty soon you should start seeing a flower stalk coming up out of the middle. Well I did that but the poor plant looks worse than it did before I started but I'm still hoping that a beautiful big flower stalk is lurking down there somewhere and will come up and surprise me. This is a, a little bromeliad that I got from a club. I belong to a plant club, and they sent me this in the mail. Maybe it's just not old enough to bloom, but that's a trick to try. If you have one 
you know, something in this bromeliad family has never bloomed and it looks old enough to bloom, try that trick, putting the apple in a plastic bag on and wait six weeks and see if that'll start it. There's some, some gas that the apple gives off that's supposed to make the blossom start. Now, if you went to Australia and we're looking for interesting plants in treetops, you might see something like this. Lots of somethings like this. Like has fingers. Right. Now, Heather, you're pretty, you have a pretty good imagination, too. Uh, this is named after an animal. What animal has something sticking out of its head? A rabbit? <laughs> well, uh, not as, not as uh, soft and fluffy as a rabbit. I've got a, an animal over here that's very anxious to meet you. I have to keep him quiet for a few minutes. Right. <laughs> a deer. Sometimes deer are called, uh, one kind of deer is called a stag. One kind of father deer is called a stag. And this fern is called the stag horn fern because the fronds look like a stag's antlers. This one is growing in a pot, but lots of them, it probably could grow on the top of a tree, too. Or just some of my friends have them just tied to pieces of bark and hanging up in their uh, greenhouses. <clears throat> so there's another kind of air plant, a stag horn fern. There are lots of ferns that are air plants, and lots of orchids, too. I don't have any orchids today, but they, they really do well as epiphytes, a plant that grows on another plant. I'm really throwing a lot of new words at you today. Well, let's take a look at this animal, since he's so anxious to escape. <laughs> now, I know you know what kind of animal, what family he is in, but do you know what kind of turtle he is? A snapping turtle? I don't think that, uh, no, that, that's probably a pretty good guess. Snapping turtles are big, but snapping turtles have much bigger heads and I wouldn't be holding it so calmly if it were a snapping turtle. You have to be very careful with snapping turtles because they have long necks. Have you ever heard of a turtle that's uh, supposed to be especially good to make soup out of? Don't worry, I'm not going to make soup out of this one. <laughs> but this is a famous turtle because they live in the Chesapeake Bay and um, soup made out of them is a great delicacy. They're named after a pattern on their back. See if you can see a, a pattern, not a triangle, not a square. Uh, what's, uh, what's another shape you can think of? Circle. Uh, what shape is a kite? Triangle. Well, it's more than a triangle. It's two triangles put together. What shape <laughs> is that? How about diamond? Yeah. <laughs> this is the diamond-backed terrapin because he has this diamond, with imagination, he has a diamond pattern on his back. Let's turn him over and see what he looks like underneath. You can tell how old he is. Yeah, you fun. can. Uh, so, sometimes you can. It's sort of, it's never exactly right. It's sort of right. We think this is a female. The she's much lighter underneath. Now, if you found this turtle, sometimes these turtles do come out on the land when it's time to lay their eggs. But if you found her walking along on the land, and you wanted to figure out whether it was a water turtle or a land turtle, what clue could you look for? You could watch and see if it lays its eggs. And went back to the water, right? Yeah, if you had time, if you could want to make a long observation. What do a lot of birds and animals that live in the water have on their feet between their toes? A web. Right. You want to check and see? It's webbed. Webbed feet. Now, most of the turtles, all the other turtles that we have around here don't have webs on their feet. She doesn't want us to look at her hind feet. I guess we'll look at her front feet. <laughs> the tur that's the turtle's way of protecting itself, isn't it? By pulling in all of its legs. She does better if we don't bother her. But you can see that the toes are connected by a web, like a duck's foot or a goose's foot so that they're very good swimmers. That makes them able to swim much faster in the water. 
their head is the most interesting part, I think. It has such a smooth, smooth skin and sort of poke, sort of peppery, sort of salt and pepper. Too bad we don't have a nice little pond here for it to go swimming in. What would you think that diamondback terrapins would eat if they live in the water? Shrimp. Right, right. Thing, other animals that live in the water, shrimp and little minnows. Mm. And um, lower things. Lower things. Maybe, Maybe some little snakes. Right. <laughs> any any little animal that comes swimming by. <laughs> in the winter they go down to the bottom of the bay, Chesapeake Bay, and sleep. What's that called when animals go down? Hibernating. Right. And then when the people want to get them to make soup out of, they have to dredge them up and take them to the market to sell. But they make nice pets. Okay, you want to go back in your box? The diamond back terrapin. This is about as big as they get. And they're very, they're something that Marylanders are famous for. Maryland's famous for all over the world. Maybe we'll take another look at her if she gets too rambunctious. Now I borrowed this plant from my mother. And what's going to happen there pretty soon? A heart. It's going to be a flower. It's going to be a flower. Uh, this is called a crab cactus or a Christmas cactus or Easter cactus, depending on what time of the year it blooms. But the legs, they, they sort of remind you of crab legs, don't they? You know how crab mm. legs have all those joints on. And it's not stickery like a lot of cactus, cacti. And it, a lot of its relatives grow in the tops of trees are epiphytes. This one's only going to have one blossom on. Another curious thing growing in this pot is a little wild plant that's good for a nibble. I thought you and Heather might like to try a nibble. You know, I know you don't go around nibbling on mm -hmm. plants without having them properly identified, right? <laughs> yeah, they, but they don't, how many leaves do they have? Four. Oh, three. 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 So this is one of the plants that every country boy and girl should know called sour grass. That one only has two leaves. But I guess my mother had her plants out for the uh, summer, and when she brought them in, she had some sour grass seeds. And they came up. Does it taste sour? Yeah. <laughs> it's just a nice little plant to know. Well, that's curious. All of mother's sour grass leaves have two leaflets on. Maybe it it's happier growing outside than it is inside. Only had enough energy to put out two leaflets, <laughs> but it tastes just the same. Rora, you want a bite of sour grass? Mm. No. Aurora ought to be interested in epiphytes because, you know, he came from Peru. And down in Peru, they have lots of epiphytes growing in the tops of the trees in the jungle in the kind of place that Aurora used to live. Here's a beautiful little one. Now, you could tell that that was probably a relation to a pineapple. Couldn't you reach your finger over and feel the uh, leaves? They feel just the same as the stickery. They're bumpy and hard. This is a one kind of plant called Cryptanthus. It doesn't have a very deep place in the middle for water to collect, but maybe it will when it gets older. And here's a, another one I borrowed from my friend, Mr. Harper, that has a well in the middle with water. Another bromeliad. Okay, what's an epiphyte? Uh, a plant that grows on another plant. plant and doesn't bother it, right? And a mm -hmm. parasite it is, does bother right, grows on another plant and does it damage, right? Now, if you ever buy a pineapple at the grocery store, or if you have a bromeliad, one of these other plants that has a lot of little babies around, and you want to try growing them in a different way, I was watching a television program not too long ago, and I saw a lady take an old log like this and she found some little holes like in there and there and wired little 
air plants on them, little baby air plants. She took some wire and just wired them on. She didn't have to worry about putting in any dirt because they don't need dirt. They just need water and light and heat. So there's a w special way to have a little garden. What's this stuff all over this log? Moss. Moss. It's dry. On your way home today, I bet you can look up in the trees as you go by and see lots of mosses growing up in the trees. So they are epiphytes too. They're so tiny. Around here we have tiny ones down in South America and Central America and Ecuador and the Galapagos Islands. They have great big fluffy ones. <laughs> but here, our epiphytes are very small, mosses and lichens that stick to the bark but get their food from the air and sunshine and water. So something, several things to think about. Epiphytes, parasites, bromeliads. Three, three words, three new words for your vocabulary. And let me, let me hear one of you tell the story of the air plant that is not a plant that's over on the cocoa table. Can you tell me that story so when you meet somebody that has one, you can tell them the truth? Well, it's a, a, it's a plant that's made where little uh, jellyfish lived on. They caught all those uh, things, and they uh, some people came down and uh, dug them up out. Dug things. them up and then brought them up and. Um, died them. And uh, sold them for sold plants them, yeah. when they're really animals. <laughs> but they gave them the name air plant because they don't need any care. But their um, make-believe air plant and the ones we've been talking about, the staghorn fern, the bromeliads, the cactus, and the members of the pineapple family are really real air plants. I'm glad you could come to Hodgepodge Lodge today and meet the diamondback terrapin and learn about epiphytes with Heather and Eric and me. Come back again soon. This program was made possible through funds contributed by members of the Maryland Center for Public Broadcasting. Pre-recorded in the studios of the Maryland Center for Public Broadcasting.